Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And I want to tell you about something that we just discovered recently in our Amazon Files Hub group coaching that we have every single month. We were discussing the Wholesale Bundle framework and the sticking points. And there seems to be a very common theme among all of us. Um, we tend to overthink like every little thing, right? And when we were working through the framework, there's a lot of steps to take, a lot of questions, a lot of things that you need to do. And everyone was asking, well, I'm not sure when it's time to move on to the next step to make decisions. I joked that we kind of needed an overthinkers checklist and nearly half of the people were like, yes, yes, I want that. I need that. Uh, so this episode is all about overthinking and moving past our analysis paralysis and to making decisions. We need to make decisions in our business and we can't take forever all of the time. Otherwise, we will slowly, slowly uh, kill ourselves. <laughs> we will, our business will not grow. We will not make the decisions that we need to move our business forward and in the right direction. And that takes some, some decision making skills and how to get over analysis paralysis and overthinking everything and just doing it as our friends at Nike would say. And I know it's easier uh, said than done. So we're going to go over some tactics and, and some things that you can do to like practice um, making decisions, just making decisions, especially if you feel indecisive, especially if you're new and you're just second guessing everything because you don't have a lot of experience to back up your decisions or you've made bad decisions and you don't want to continue repeating those. Of course, that is very normal and natural to feel that way. And that brings on fear and worry and overthinking. And then we literally are in a rocking chair and we're moving but we're not going anywhere. And so I want to help you break that cycle and kind of make some some progress in the space of just moving forward, making decisions, stopping the overthinking. Now, we're not going to, you know, uncover um, these things that you've been worrying about for, for your whole entire life. Like if you've just naturally are a worrier, we're not going to just cure this overnight, of course. Um, but these are just things that you can put in place to be like, okay, I need to make some decisions in my business. I can't keep thinking and thinking and thinking. I have to actually do something. Um, so we're going to go over that. But first, I wanted to make sure that you were aware that workshops are back for 2023. We have a couple different events coming up and I would love for you guys to check it out. I can't wait to meet you in person. That is my favorite part of this job. I get to, um, you know, most of the time it's me behind this camera, behind this microphone, by myself. I love to get with people and talk business and help people grow and just learn about you and learn about your business and what your struggles are and see if there's anything I can do to support and help you. And building bundles together in, in a group setting is so much fun. So I'm just looking forward to it. And I hope I can meet you in January when we come to the Dallas Marketplace. We're doing a full on workshop. It's basically three days of of workshopping, meeting each other, going through the trade show together, and really just solidifying your business for 2023. If that's something that excites you and something you want to do, you want to crush your goals for this coming up year, whatever your reason is, whatever your why of why you started this business, we can make that happen. We can make it grow. Is that what you want? Because I do, and I can't wait to do it with you. So I want you to go to mommyincome.com forward slash workshop and check out the workshop that we have. You can also check out our events page and see what other events we have coming up as well. I would love to be able to meet you in person. I just love people. I'm just a people person and I can't wait to meet you and um, just have a discussion. Take a picture, like talk about your business, talk about your dog. I, like It doesn't matter. Um, I just I love people and I, I love to help them in person. And I feel like there's just such an energy of an experience rather than just watching a video. I am all about online education. I take constant, I am constantly taking courses and things like that online. But there's just something to be said about getting in a room full of other people's energy and just like bringing all of your ideas and your questions and your aha moments together. It is just... Um, I just, it's just one of my favorite things. So I would love to be able to meet you guys there. I'm going to Dallas and then we'll be in Las Vegas in the end of February. And there's going to be a retreat later on in the year where it's going to be um, just amazing. I cannot wait to talk about the retreat when it comes, but stay tuned. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's talk more about these overthinking issues that we tend to have, right? We all have issues about worrying and fear, this and that. Some of us make decisions easier than others, but analysis paralysis is real. 
and it's normal. So that's one of the first things I want you to do collectively. If you are feeling tense and you feel like, oh my gosh, she's talking about me. I overthink. I have analysis paralysis all the time. First of all, just let's take a collective breath and just realize this is normal for most people. <sighs> Isn't it nice to feel a little bit more normal? Like not, not, you're not crazy. You're not out of control. You're not everything. You actually just are a normal person and you worry and think because you care. Because you want your business to succeed. So analysis paralysis is real and overthinking is real. We're all normal and we're all rowing in the same boat here. So let's just take that um, as we're walking through some of these things. Just take that as part of what's in your mind. It's normal. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing bad. You know what I mean? That, that sort of thing. We are all in the same boat. But what we're going to do is try to solve some of these or take some of these worries and fears and overthinking and analysis paralysis. And we're going to um, try to just reduce it a little. We're not going to cure it all in one night or this is not going to be the podcast that, you know, is going to change everything overnight. But it's some tactics that we can use when we notice our overthinking, when we notice our analysis paralysis that happens on a regular basis. Most of you within the wholesale bundle framework of like, oh, I don't know what decision to make. I don't know what product to pick. I don't know if there's too much competition. I don't know about my packaging. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Overthinking oftentimes, um, when we more and more when we think about the problem that we're facing or the issue or the stress, the worse we feel, the more we think about it. And the worse we feel, the harder it is to take positive action in the right direction because our emotions can cloud our judgment. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I am a highly emotional person. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. When I'm upset, you see it. When I'm mad, when I'm happy, when I'm mad, when I'm, all the things. Like, I'm very emotional. And I feel all of my emotions outwardly most of the time. A lot of people can kind of keep them inside and stuff them in and try to compartmentalize them. And there's, we're all different. But that's kind of where I go. So I'm very emotional. So I tend to think in some of these extremes. And oftentimes, thinking overthinking is like thinking about the past and worrying about the future based on what has happened before because our minds and brains think oh no there's pain over there don't go there or there's stress or there's I failed on that before so I don't want to go in that direction worrying ruminating over the past worrying about the future um, because of the past as opposed to what I love to consider the opposite is problem solving problem solving consists of things thinking about and working through, whether on paper or out loud or anything, working through a difficult situation, through purposefully looking for ways to solve the problem. So let's just see the differences right away in overthinking versus um, problem solving. So overthinking is like that worry and the fear and you have an emotional attachment to it. It's like, what happens if this? What happens if this? What about this? What about this? Now that's not problem solving. That is just kind of identifying and looking at all of the options and looking um, problem solving is just more about thinking about the, the possible ways that we can solve it because that actually uh, reorients our focus on the actual solutions. And did you know that what you focus on is actually what grows? So if you're looking, if you are looking to solve a problem, to fix it, to find viable solutions, your focus is going to be on that. You're going to focus on what are the possible options for this. Rather than the overthinking and the worry is focusing on all of the things that could go wrong. How could this be bad? How can this go wrong? How is this going to be what happened in the past? And is that going to happen? And you're going to predict the future based on the past. And that's when the worry and fear comes in. To where if you're shifting your thinking to, okay, how do I problem solve here? What are the possible solutions? All of them. No, not passing judgment on them. Good, bad, or otherwise. What are the solutions? Sometimes there's solutions that are illegal, <laughs> but they're still solutions and you can kind of put them all on the table and then dissect them and figure out which one is the best. But the overthinking oftentimes gets us into focusing on all the things that we can't control. And then dwelling on how bad or scared it makes us feel. Oh my gosh, what if I launch my bundle and no one buys it? I will lose all this money. I'm going to go under. I'm going to lose my house. Like that that whole, the, the train that kind of comes down the track there when we start thinking, what if, what if, what if, what if. Any time spent learning from previous behavior and coming up with creative solutions, that is when thinking is really productive. Time spent overthinking and over ruminating and over, over and over, what if, what if, what if, what if, won't enhance your life at all. 
whether it's 10 minutes or 10 hours, overthinking just kind of kills it, makes it dead in the water. Whatever ideas that you have, whatever you're thinking about, it, it spins them in a negative direction. And it's, I, I want to also say how normal it is to look at a problem, look at a stress point, look at a, a decision from every angle. And that includes the negative angles. We don't want to just, this is not all just sunshine and rain. <laughs> sunshines and rainbows. It's not all like happy, happy all the time. This is all going to be perfect. It's all going to work out. I mean, let's be real. We make mistakes. Things happen. Things outside of our control, sometimes inside of our control. We self-sabotage sometimes. We 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 overthink to the point where we, we're indec- indecisive. But thinking more about the solutions will help us to move forward in the right direction. Now, before you can start thinking about changing these habits and changing these perspectives from all negative and not to all positive, but to all possible solutions and deciding on the best one, um, you have to be aware of when you're overthinking, right? So I'm just going to read um, some of these statements and signs that we might be overthinking. And it doesn't mean that it's all, all the time your constant habit, but we are all guilty of overthinking certain things that stress us out or scare us or we have to make decisions about. So just if you can close your eyes, think about any of this stuff. Does any of these relate to you? Have you said these? Have you thought these even today? <laughs> so thinking about this, this is just kind of signs that you're overthinking a lot of things if you can relate. So I can't stop worrying about the potential results, the outcome, particularly the bad ones. I worry, I often worry about things I have no control over. I remind myself of my mistakes. I relive embarrassing moments in my mind over and over. I often ask myself, what if, what if, what if questions? I have difficulty sleeping because my brain feels like it won't shut off. I always assume the worst. I have constant fear surrounding decision making. I know I have put the work in, but I still don't trust myself. I need more information before I make a decision again and again. I spend so much time either dwelling on past events or worrying about the future that I often miss what's going on right here and now. So if you can relate to any of these statements, whether it's all the time or sometimes or faced with a difficult problem, we are all overthinkers about something somewhere somehow and it's easy to get caught up in all this but fortunately there are several what we call this is like mental workouts right like mental strength exercises that we can do to retrain our brain from overthinking into a more healthier mindset and this takes time and practice and you can help yourself adjust your thinking by taking a few steps to just overcome and be more productive with your brain power and just just again to say that I'm not saying that you have to turn negatives all into positives. That's just not some people's personalities, period. My husband is the opposite of me. So if I am one of those pet, um, optimistic, sunshine and rainbows kind of people, he will be at the other end of the spectrum thinking everything's bad, everything's uh, worst case scenario first, and then we end up meeting in the middle. So it's a great um, balance there, but the, 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 some personalities are just bent in the way of always seeing the negative first. That's not right or wrong. It's just different. And the way that we can start seeing some of the positive and I can start seeing some of the other side, the negative side of certain things, then there's a great balance there. When there's a great balance, you can see both sides and then make an effective decision that's going to help solve the problem that you have. Part of doing that is getting rid of these automatic negative thoughts. They're ant, they're called ants. Like So imagine ants running around in your brain, these little ants, and there are your automatic negative thoughts. The moment that you see, hear, or observe something and those ants start running around, those ants. What are your ants? So those negative thoughts, you can keep a record of them. Not necessarily, and don't judge them. That is one of the things I want to say the most here. Is it not to judge your own thoughts and and thinking, not passing judgment, saying, oh, this is a good thought or this is a bad thought. It's just a thought. But recognizing and being aware of it helps you change it a bit. So using a notebook, you can write something down, whether it's your, you can use an app on your phone, your note app or whatever else, and you can keep a record of this. So when you have those automatic negative thoughts that come into your mind, those little ants that are running around saying, what if, what if, and yeah, but, and what about this? And we're going to fail. And this is all going to turn out bad. 
just simply acknowledging that they're there and writing them somewhere can also help you to get them out of your head. So you don't have to necessarily judge them, say, oh my gosh, I'm thinking bad thoughts again and shame on me. No, that's not what we're doing. We're just acknowledging them. Oh, I have these like negative worries and thoughts. Let me just write them down because what it does is also takes that out of your head and puts that somewhere else. You're actually giving it a home. You're not kicking it out. You're not saying you don't belong here, which hopefully eventually we can talk to our negative thoughts like that and say, hey, we don't, we, you're not welcome here. But for now, you are just giving them a place. You're saying you're allowed to be here. I'm just going to put you over here. And so you take your thoughts and you just write them down. No judgments. You get a piece of paper. You can even throw it away. But it's just like, you know what? I'm really stuck in this analysis paralysis. I'm really stuck in this um, constant worry cycle. So I'm just going to write this stuff down. Um, as you dig through the details, ask you why the situation is causing you negative thoughts. Just ask the question really quick. You can literally set, I have this timer, you guys. I don't know if you know that I am live and die off of my 15 minute timer. And I have this right here. And so sometimes when I'm really, really worried, I set the timer even for five minutes because honestly, 15 minutes is too long for me to sit and worry. Like I just can't. So, um, so I put five minutes on the clock and I get my piece of paper or my notebook or whatever and I just write everything that's in my head at the moment. I'm worried about this. I'm fearful of this. Everything. No judgments. No anything. Just like all out what's inside my head. You'd be surprised at how much that can relieve all of the things that you're worrying about. Because once you get it on paper and out of your head and you actually look at it and reread it, sometimes it's actually kind of laughable. You're like, oh, I'm worried about that. Well, there's an easy solution for that. Oh, I'm worried about this. Oh, that's not really, you know, you can actually rationalize with yourself. And sometimes it's still just as real as when you wrote it down. And that's okay. You're just taking a step to do something with it. You're not just letting it circle and circle around. You can also break down the emotions of why you're experiencing that and trying to identify it not judging it, not calling it or labeling. You can label it if you want to, but just being like, I feel fear. I'm scared to death. Why? Why? Because, and then fill in the blank and just be honest with yourself. Nobody else is looking. This is your own private work that you can do for yourself and you can do it in five minutes. And then writing those things down and just asking why. It's okay. The better you know yourself, the more you'll realize um, why you're, what's really at the core of what you're scared of. Maybe you're really scared that your mother-in-law is going to judge you because you're starting yet another business that's probably not going to work out like the rest of them. I just spoke to a client that was dealing with that. And she's like, well, everyone in my family is always judging me because I've started this business and this business and this business and I can't, like, I'm just not happy with anything. And I really think that this is going to be the one. You know what? That's perfectly normal. And it's okay for us to be aware and recognize that there's other people that aren't supporting us. And that makes us feel a certain way. And that's okay. Just acknowledging that and giving it a home and a space so that you can decide how much value you're going to put, say, on your mother-in-law's opinion of your business, right? Because you get to assign value to that. You get to decide who can affect your actions and who doesn't get to. If the store clerk that your your gas station clerk, you know, you're talking to and they, they pass judgment on you for some reason, you would laugh and you'd be like, <laughs> what do you know? You don't know me. Like, you know me in this two minutes that I interacted with you, but you don't actually know me, know my life. So their opinion doesn't have value as opposed to, say, your mother-in-law or something like that who does know you and does pass judgment and her opinion might have a little more value. But does it? It's just food for thought. Another way to kind of curb your overthinking and get it under control is to acknowledge previous successes. Like when you're in the middle of overthinking, st stop, take out that notebook. I don't even call, I don't care if you call your notebook like the overthinking notebook or your favorite note taking app, whatever you're doing and record five things that have gone right this past week. Five things. I know that five things have gone right for you this past week. I know you can sit down and think of those. Then you can look at that list and you say, you know what? Look at past your life then. If you can't find something recent that you can hold on to, that you have done correctly, you've done right, that you're proud of yourself for doing, maybe it's something new, different, maybe it's something you're an expert at and you're just like, yep, still killing it. <laughs> Tell yourself, I can do hard things. 
you can do hard things. You've done it before and you can do it again. Look, if you've been married for at least several years, maybe even the first year, <laughs> you can do hard things. It's not as easy as we think, right? But you can do hard things and you can make it and you can't become a better person. You have successes all the time. You just need to look at them and acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. Just say, you know what? I have had many successes, specifically this week, and here they are. It doesn't mean you're boasting or you're proud or arrogant or anything like that. It just means that you're acknowledging that you can do hard things, that you can make decisions and make good ones. Another way to do that is also to stay present. Staying in the current moment moment helps you focus on what you can control. Instead of worrying about what might happen, you're focusing on what you can control right now in this moment. Let's just be real. We are not in control of Amazon or their algorithm or their check-in process, but you are. You are, in fact, in control of proper research, writing listings, taking good photos, setting prices, and focusing on growing your business. What we need to focus on most is just taking simple actions. Action is the antidote to fear. So whatever it is that you fear, taking an action in some sort of direction helps the fear subside. You actually did something about it. There are plenty of ways to help stay in the moment so that you're not constantly thinking about past or future, but you're actually thinking about what can I do? What can I control? How can I do this in my business right now in this moment? So one of the things I do, of course, living, dying by my timer, right, is scheduling time to worry. So these last few weeks, I have actually been saying that to myself. I don't have time to worry about this right now. I will worry about this on Friday. And I literally tell myself that, like, I'm going to sit down and worry about this problem on Friday and figure it out and solve it and worry and give in to fear and write down all the stuff. But I can't do it right now because I don't have time right now. (laughs) And honestly, just disciplining yourself enough to be like, you know what, I will worry about this, but I'm just not going to do it today. I'm going to do it at this time and say, and then when you, (laughs) instead of all day, every day worrying and thinking and fearing, and then just being in inaction and procrastination shows its ugly head when we are fearful and worried procrastination is like the literally the number one like symptom of this. So making that 15 minute hustle appointment and literally putting it on your calendar and be like 15 minute hustle time for worry and then literally sit down and whether it's on a computer screen whether you can even talk to yourself like you guys I'm gonna confess right now I'm gonna tell you what I do. This is embarrassing and vulnerable and funny kind of if you think of it that way and you feel free to make fun of me anytime you want. Um, I talk to myself I like to talk. I'm an outward processor, which means that in order for me to really work out problems, I have to talk about them and talk out loud with them and walk myself through it verbally. And so sometimes I do this in front of this camera talking to myself. (laughs) I know. Isn't that silly? I don't care if it's silly because I don't have time to sit and worry and worry and worry and overthink and overthink and then not move my business forward. My mortgage company will not wait for their payments. (laughs) So I have to plan my worry. I have to plan my processing of problems. And sometimes I turn on the camera and I turn on record and I just blah, blah, blah and talk to myself. And it's so freeing because no one's listening. No one cares. No one's judging. I'm just talking to myself so I can say whatever I want. Uh, There's no filter. There's no, no one's judging me for how I feel or how I think or how silly it might be. It's just me versus me. And I can talk about my worries and then kind of say, oh, I'm worried about that. Why? (laughs) And talking about it out loud or writing it down or even taking your phone app that has like um, a voice recorder and just talk to yourself. My dad used to talk to himself all the time. And when I was a kid, I used to laugh and I'm just like, what is, who's he talking to? He's like mumbling under his breath all the time. And now I get it. I am cut from the same cloth in order to really work out problems and emotions that I have. I need to first kind of get brain dump and kind of get all the yuck out and then kind of sort it through and realize like what's actually real here and what's, you know, what's something I really need to focus on. Unplugging and shutting off your computer or your phone to a designate for a designated amount of time every day and doing an activity that brings you joy will help with worry. It will help with overthinking. Sometimes you ever hear of the, <clears throat> the shower, um, scenario where people are like I get my best ideas in the shower um and like you need a notepad in the shower because all of a sudden you have all these great ideas sometimes when we turn off all the extra stimuli 
we actually have time to think, like think for real, like give our, our space for our emotions and, and actually think. So unplugging that and do, doing something you love. When you do something you love, you're, you're activating your dopamine and your endorphins in your brain that gives off those happy feelings and doing something you love then helps you clear the space, clear the clouds. The worries and the fears are natural and they're the clouds, but the clouds can be moved away. They don't have to stay forever. So the clouds kind of roll in and you can let them roll in and give them some space and acknowledge that they're there and then let them roll away by doing something that makes you, that brings you joy. Now, for me, that's multiple things. Unfortunately, it's also baking. And so when I'm feeling like, oh, I need to do something joyful, like I'm like, I'm going to go make something, bake something. But then <laughs> part of the joy is eating half the cake. So <laughs> ah, the struggle is real. Anyway, um, you also another tactic here that we can do is writing a list of things that you are in control of and choose one to take action on. Write a list of things that you are in control of. So we already talked about some things we're not in control of, especially in our business. But there are things you are in control of and take action on one of them. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm worried. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about this. What happens if I screw this up? What happens if I screw this up? Okay, fair enough. But the second list is these are the things I am in control of and I can do my best and be excellent at the following. Research, pricing, reaching out to people, emails, doing photography, writing your listing, um, getting some, getting more suppliers, looking at other, whatever your strongest suit is, start with that. I know I'm in control of this and I can take action. Also, something very simple is getting outside, taking a walk, walking away from your desk, walking away from the something that's frustrating you for 15 minutes and just taking a deep breath and walking outside. Even if it's just a quick lap around your house or you go out in the yard and just like walk around for a second. And instead of focusing on your problem, take note of your environment. Noting the way things smell, noting what you see, the sounds, that's what makes us feel fully alive is when we are just aware of what's going on around us, what's going on in our heads, what brings us joy. This is all a lot about awareness as well. Getting outside like you guys, it's cold here. It's cold. It's winter. I don't want to go outside. But I also know that just a simple change in environment for 15 minutes at a time can just change the perspective. It kind of like I said clears the clouds a little bit. So even if it's cold, I put a hat on, I put a boots on, I put some gloves on and I just take a quick walk. Take a couple deep breaths and talk to myself yet again this stinks. I don't like this problem. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm kind of worried, but I can do hard things. I can have success. I can focus on what I have control over. What do I have control over? Let's take action on that. Just some simple steps. Now I say simple, but I know the struggle is real. I oftentimes overthink myself for a week and then go, what the heck was I thinking? I know how to stop doing this. Why was I ruminating over the same thing over and over again? And I, there's something worse. The something that I hate the most is wasted time. I hate wasting, especially my own time when I'm wasting my own time. And I recognize that it's like, oh, how can I prevent this? You know, Getting a different perspective also really, really helps when we tend to overthink. Asking someone who has no idea and no clue and probably maybe not even knows what you're talking about, but getting an outside perspective is really helpful to keep us balanced. Number one, it can either validate that we're on the right track and we feel like, okay, yeah, or it can bring in a perspective we hadn't thought of and help us to see the problem more clearly. So quieting your fearful thoughts requires stepping outside of your usual perspective. If you're, if you can't think of it from any other angle and give that any sort of weight, asking someone else to kind of say, Hey, what do you think of this problem? What do you think of this? You might not always take their advice, but just hearing someone else's perspective can, can kind of, um, if you're off kilter a little bit, kind of put you back on an even balance. Like, Oh yeah, I hadn't thought of that. And that's a good and interesting perspective. So looking at situations from a different viewpoint also helps. One of the ways you can do this is in the Amazon files hub. You can go and ask your fellow wholesale bundlers how they get through this step or how they get through this, or how do they defeat this 
overthinkers. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> if you're in the hub, you have the overthinkers training and checklist that I made along with this episode. So make sure you log into your student portal and you download the um, overthinkers guide and checklist for the framework because I went ahead and created that for you so that you actually have a checklist when you're going through the framework and you're checking off the different things when it's time to move to the next step. So that's also an additional way that you can get some perspective is coming to the Facebook group, coming to the hub and asking your fellow wholesale bundlers how they think about this particular problem. Also, asking someone who's very different from you is also really helpful because if you always tend to ask the people that are like-minded with you sometimes or very similar, they're going to have a very similar perspective, which is helpful if you're only seeking validation for your thoughts. But if you're seeking a well-rounded perspective on your issue or your problem or whatever you're facing, asking someone who's a different personality or you just know that they think differently than you, it's actually a great idea because they're going to have insights and perspectives and different things to offer that you might not have thought of. And it can give you the balance that you need to be like, oh, that's the missing piece I needed to think about before I make this decision. And of course, my last thing I'm going to tell you, this is in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. It's literally an entire chapter. So if you have not read Dream Big, Step Small, why? Get yourself this gift for Christmas. It's on my website. I'll send you a signed copy or you can get it on Audible and listen to it all uh, on Audible or on Amazon. You can do the ebook and have it right away. You can print it out or order from Amazon either way. Dream Big, Step Small, chapter four. Trust the facts, not the feelings. Y'all have heard me say this a million times, probably on the show and other places, but this has really been the single-handed most important thing that I've gone through to help me really get away from overthinking and analysis paralysis and decision-making issues, like trusting facts and not feelings. Because y'all, like I said, very emotional person. I have lots of feelings all the time for all kinds of reasons, and they're very extreme in any situation. So how I feel about a situation and what is true about the situation, the problem, the issue can be very, very different how we feel and what's actually true. So giving a situation an unbiased approach leads to better decision making. And as business owners, whether you like it or not, depending on where you are in your business, you're the CEO and the janitor. You're doing all the things. So being a good decision maker is a skill you need to have. And that's something that I kind of had to, you know, slap myself out of for a while. I was like, trusting facts, not feelings. I spent way too much time in my business very early on making decisions based on feelings. And they didn't work out very well because feelings come and go. Emotions come and go. And they're based on, they're situationally based on uh, things that we remember, things that we worry about, things that we're anchored to, anchored to, things that we hold as true and valuable in our lives. So they change and they're fickle and they come up and down. We want to make decisions in our business that are overall well-rounded, helpful for our growth and good for us. That doesn't always mean they're going to be easy. That doesn't mean they're always going to feel good either. Sometimes it doesn't feel good to, let's say, um, liquidate inventory that didn't work out that you didn't make profit on. That doesn't feel good, but it is the right decision, right? So what's true and how we feel is going to be very different. And the sooner we acknowledge that, the better we're going to be at making our decisions. Write down how you feel about a situation. I know you guys are like, write down, write down, write down. I don't want to write stuff down. Listen. There is motor skills and brain activity that are connected with hand and pen and paper and brain. There are studies on this. It is important to use pen and paper, even though everything is digital nowadays and we can type everything and we can talk text and we can FaceTime and everything else. There is something that happens physiologically when you write things. So don't dismiss it like, oh, she, she wants us to do, a, you know, write us a five page paper here. No, you guys, but just taking a few minutes and writing it down. You just try it. Just try it before you judge it. I know some of you guys are like, oh, this writing down stuff is for the birds. Take a survey of what's true and factual about your situation. True and factual. What is controllable? Write down the worst case scenarios because you know you've already thought of them. And then write down the best case scenarios. Maybe there's just one or two. I'm talking a 15 minute hustle, y'all. I'm not asking you for hours and, you know, like paragraphs full of writing here. 
Just write it down. Worst case scenario, I lose all of my money and my business closes. Isn't that not our worst fear? That we're embarrassed that someone else is going to say, oh, again, you have another failed business. (laughs) Y'all, you know how many failed ideas and businesses and things that I've had in my life? So freaking what? That's what I'm going to tell you. So what if someone says that? First of all, who's actually going to say that to your face? And if they're thinking about that, that's none of your business. You don't have to worry about what they're thinking of you. Does their, do, do their opinions write your, your mortgage check? Can you take their opinion to the bank and cash it? Because if you can't, it doesn't have value. Just, just putting that out there. Okay. And then evaluating what's, what's most likely to happen. Okay, right. So this is the whole trust effects, not the feelings. I'm going to go through this little scenario for you. But because this is part of this is part of the dream big step small book as well. But this is trusting the facts, not feeling. So I'm gonna give you an example. You feel like your bundle is not going to sell. You came up with a bundle, you spent the time in the research, you spent the time with your bundle, you actually like it and you think it's awesome. But you're like, Oh, what if it doesn't sell? You feel fear that it's not going to sell. So what is true? So let's go with what's true first. Okay, so you have this feeling. It's real. It's valid. We're not going to dismiss it. We're not going to tell it to go away. You have real fear, genuine concern that you're you spent a lot of time and money and energy and this is not going to work. Right. So what is true? You went through the framework steps, right? The data and the research shows that there is demand for your product. You've got good keywords. Uh, You follow the framework to run and write the listing. You brought frequent, you looked at frequently bought together. You know, people want these items together. The numbers show that you will make a comfortable profit. Okay. The numbers show that that's what's true. These are what's true. You've got good keywords. The demand numbers will fall, will fall within the guidelines, all these things. Okay. So you still have fear that it's not going to sell, even though those things are true. Okay. What's the worst case scenario? Let's just walk through it. I mean, let's just give it some space. Worst case scenario, I don't sell a single bundle after six months, despite changing, updating and reworking the listing. I lose all the money, time and effort that I put into this bundle. That's worst case scenario, right? Best case scenario, I sell out the first day of my bundle hits the warehouse and I have to buy more. (laughs) Equally concerning problem, right? (laughs) You know, because all of a sudden you're sold out. So what's most likely to happen? What's most likely to happen? So this is how we trust the facts and not the feelings, right? We just we just talked about what we're scared of, right? Full out scared of all these things. What's actually true about what I did, building the bundle, following the framework, getting all the data, collecting all the stuff, knowing I'm going to make a, 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 I have a comfortable profit margin. In the worst case scenario, you don't sell a single thing. You have to throw it all out and does all this waste of time. Best case scenario, you sell out right away and then you have to constantly reorder. What's most likely to happen? Within a week or so, your product starts selling a little bit. You can continue to reorder. You can update the listing, reflect on any new changes. And what are the proofs of that? How do you know that's most likely to happen? Well, you have strong keywords. You've done proper research. The numbers show that there's good demand for your products. So then it's time to do what? It's time to take action. You know what could be the worst case scenario. You know what could be the best case scenario. You've got your proof of what you've had, trusting the facts. What are the facts? You've got strong keywords, good research, the data numbers say everything in there. You're going to make a good profit margin. It's time to take some action. Sometimes you might go over the same thoughts repeatedly because you aren't taking any action towards the solution. You're going over and over and over again because you haven't done anything. Can't stop thinking about what could go wrong. Instead of it having ruined your day, help your feelings help you make better choices. Be proactive about reaching your goals. This will get them out of your head and onto paper, and it will channel that energy into actionable steps. Now, one of the best ways to also do that, to curb your overthinking and knowing which action to take is also to ask for help. It does not make you weak or unintelligent if you ask for help it makes you drum roll please human I don't know about you but I can't do it all and I've tried lots of times to do everything all on my own and you know what doesn't work out 
It steals all of your joy, all of your peace, and you constantly feel stressed, negative, worried, afraid, resentful, angry. Now, I don't want to relate to any of those words. So I realized a long time ago, I don't want to do it all myself. I used to think I did. I used to think that I wanted to do everything myself. And I, you know, like I grew up with that mantra. If you want something done right, do it yourself. And I believed that for far too long. Instead, I'm like, if you want something done right, teach someone how to do it your way. (laughs) That's better. (laughs) And then hire them to do it over and over again. Um, No, honestly, though, like, I get that. Asking for help is very difficult sometimes. It feels humiliating when you feel like admitting, I don't know how to do this. I need some help. But you know what's worse? Staying stuck for a long time when you could have gotten help by simply asking. Can't get a yes if you don't ask. And there's no shame in asking. So ask for help. You don't have to do this alone. Seeking outside help can develop new skills in your life, new tools for working through your thoughts and changing your mindset, looking for a supportive group or person who can, you can be honest and open with. And I cannot stress that enough. Someone that you are so comfortable with that you can literally tell them all the things and never feel judged. sharing your worries and your intentions, your goals, and being okay with saying, you know what, I'm a human and I'm going to screw up. Just be okay with that right now. And for those of you guys in the hub, make sure that you are asking your questions there. I will be there to answer them for you and help you along the way. I might give you a hug and a slug because I'm going to push you in the right direction. But I'm also going to do it with love and compassion and understanding of knowing that like this is hard stuff, you guys not going to sugarcoat it. You're in business. It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. The results are worth it. So I'm challenging you to keep your overthinking and your analysis paralysis in check. Because did you die? That's that's the question. Are you going to die? No. Anything that you do in business, especially on Amazon e-commerce, you're not going to die. This is not a dangerous job. Um, your pride might get hurt a little. Your ego might get hurt a little if you um, try to sell something that doesn't sell. But that's actually not the end of the problem. You can actually tweak things to make them sell better and more efficiently. There's solutions to all the problems. So if you don't have a supportive group, I encourage you to join the Amazon Files Hub. That's where we can um, talk in group coaching sessions every month. We can get questions answered, additional trainings, and support from a community that understands what you're going through while creating and building a business of wholesale bundles. For those that aren't in the hub, it's open enrollment. You are welcome to come join the hub at mommyincome.com forward slash hub. And you can get the full overthinkers guide to the wholesale bundle framework, including little check boxes to let you know when it's time to move forward in the framework. It's a printable download. You can uh, log into your student portal and get that right away. If you're not part of the hub, go to mommyincome.com forward slash hub and join the hub. We'd love to see you in there. And you guys just take a collective breath again. This is tough stuff you're doing, and I'm so proud of you for being willing to work on it. Your future self will thank you. Your your self right now will thank you, just relieving a little bit of that fear and stress and taking those actions. So remember, get your pens and papers, write some of that stuff down, trust the facts, not the feelings, and take some action. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on The Amazon Files.